Welcome to the BigML tutorial series. In this video, we will be discussing sources. We will begin with an introduction to sources in which we will review the primary purpose of sources. Next, we will cover the basic features regarding source creation, specifically the file formats supported and the methods by which a source can be created. Finally, we will dive into all of the configuration options available for sources, including how to change the way the source parser reads the data and how to change things like the way text analysis works. So what is a source? Sources are the first step to getting started with a typical BigML workflow. As you might imagine, it is impossible to analyze data in BigML without first uploading the data. And this is the primary purpose of the sources step. But there is actually a second important feature of sources. As we will see, when you upload a file, BigML will take a peek at the contents and try to figure out what kind of data you have. However, this auto detection is not foolproof, and so source creation is the step where you review and correct the auto detected field types as well. Let's take a quick look at creating a source using a browser. For this demonstration, we'll be using a sample of loan data from the peer to peer lending site Lending Club. I have this sample locally on my computer, and I can create a source by simply dragging and dropping this file into the UI while logged in. Once the upload is complete, if we click on the new source that is listed, we can see the results of the field type auto detection. The first thing to notice is that in the source view, the rows and columns of the original CSV have been transposed so that each field or column is shown as a row. And each row from the original file, representing in this example a loan instance, is now displayed as a column. This display orientation makes it easier to review the field types, since if there were hundreds or perhaps even thousands of fields in the original data, it would be very difficult to scroll left and right to review them all. When transposed like this, it becomes possible to paginate through the fields We can now review the field types that have been detected in our loan data. We can see here, for example, that the loan amount has been detected correctly as a numeric value. This is used to represent any real valued number. And the loan term, which has values like 36 months and 60 months, has been correctly detected as a categorical value. This is what is used to represent a finite list of discrete values like red, green, blue, or in this case, 36 months and 60 months. And we can also see further down that the employment title, which can have a wide range of possible values, has been detected correctly as a text field. However, further down, we see the description field, which is a free form explanation of why the borrower wants a loan has not been detected as a text field and instead is a categorical. In this case, the auto detection has failed because the field contains a lot of null or empty values and the peak doesn't grab enough rows to see what kind of data is actually present in this field. To fix this, we can configure the source. Pressing the configure source button, among other things, changes all of the field type descriptions into selectors, allowing us to set the type correctly. After pressing update, the field type for the description will now be correct. In the previous example, we saw three field types, numeric for real valued numbers, categorical for lists of discrete values like elephant, zebra, zebra, hippo, and text, which allows processing unstructured freeform text. In addition to these field types, BigML also recognizes date time fields. So anything that looks like an ISO style date time 
field will be automatically exploded out into the ind individual time components like hour, minute, day of week, month, year, etc. And finally, there's an items type, which can be used for a list of items. The classic example being a field which represents the contents of perhaps a shopping cart. Let's take a closer look at sources and explore the basic features. First, data to be uploaded should be in a tabular format. Typical examples are CSV, that is comma separated values, TSV, that is tab separated values, and even ARF files. Excel files are also supported, although since things like spreadsheet tabs will not be handled correctly, it is always preferred to export to a CSV when possible. Any file that is uploaded can also be compressed with standard tools like zip or gzip. This reduces how long it takes to upload the data and also uses less storage in the BigML servers. Previously, we saw how a source can be created using drag and drop, but there are several other methods as well. First, the direct, you can use a direct upload, which opens a file browser to allow selecting a local file. This, func this is functionally the same as drag and drop, but it's easier if the file is located in a different path. It is also possible to create an inline source by pasting values directly into an input box. If your da data is located on another server, you can create a source using a URL. For example, HTTP, S3, or even HDFS. This makes it possible to perform a direct upload of the remote file rather than downloading to your local machine and then uploading again. It is also possible to connect your BigML account to cloud services like Google Drive, Google Cloud, or Dropbox, and then use a file browser to create sources from the files that are stored in those cloud locations. And finally, it is of course possible to create a source programmatically using the API or bindings. Let's see an example of each of these options in the UI. First, we can upload files using the file browser. By clicking on this button in the far right, we get a typical input box that allows us to select a local path in our file system and upload files directly. As mentioned previously, we can also create a source using a URL. The button for doing this looks like a little chain link. Once opened, you can specify the URL to the resource in question. So for example, we could create a file using this HTTPS link, or perhaps with this S3 link. We can also name the file here. You can also create a source using the inline source button. This brings up an editor where you can create a small sample file. This is great for testing a specific use case or a small sample of data that you want to just see what the behavior will be, or perhaps for experimenting with feature engineering in the data set step later. As mentioned previously, you can also integrate your BigML account with Google Drive, Google Storage, and Dropbox. And for each one of these services, once they're connected, You'll be able to open up a file browser where you can see all the files in those cloud locations and use them as sources in your BigML account directly. Now let's explore the advanced options available for configuring a source. The first is the locale setting, which, among other things, affects the way in which numeric values are understood. Next, we'll see that there are several settings that change the way the source file is parsed with regards to what delineates the fields and how they are quoted, as well as the tokens that should represent missing values. The expansion of date time variables can also be disabled, which is useful if you plan to implement your own date time transformations. The separator used for delineating the individual items in an item field type can also be changed. The default is to use a comma. And finally, the way text analysis works can be changed. In order to understand the text analysis options that we're going to see and the impact that changing those settings will have, it will help to have an understanding of how the text analysis works. 
Imagine that we have the block of text shown here. The first thing that happens in the text analysis is that word stemming is performed. That is, it will detect the language of the text and then reduce all the various forms of a word into a single token. In this case, great and greatness are really the same word, that is, great. Next, the process will remove what are referred to as stop words. These are words that occur too often to be useful, like and, or, and the. Finally, the text analysis process will count up the interesting tokens that are left, and these counts become new features that the machine learning algorithm can learn from. Let's see an example of all of these advanced source parsing features. For this next example, we're going to use a file of stock prices from BBVA, which is a Spanish bank. As you can imagine, the locale of this file is different from my local setting. In particular, the numeric values are represented in the European format, where a comma delineates the integer part from the fractional part. If we don't fix the way the source parser is treating this locale, then this number will be interpreted as 722 instead of being 7.22. To fix this, we can simply open the same configure source panel and change the locale from the current United States English to Spanish. Once we've updated the locale here, pressing the update button will apply these settings and the source will be reparsed. With that change, these numeric values will now be correctly interpreted using the European format. Now let's take a look at some of the additional options that are available in the configure source panel. In particular, we can control the separator that is used to delineate the fields in this file. The default, this being a CSV, is the comma, but you can also specify your own separator, like the semicolon, the colon, or tab, or any other feature that you choose by using the other option. Sometimes you might have a situation where there's really only a single field in your data set and the separator should be used to interpret the items in a row rather than separate fields. For example, imagine a data set that only each row is just the contents of a shopping cart. If that's the case, you can use the single field option and now the separator will be used to interpret items instead of separate fields in the data set. You can also change the quote that is recognized for enclosing a field. Imagine you have a feature like a text block that might have commas in it. Since you don't want the commas to be interpreted as separators between the fields, that entire text block needs to be quoted. And this option allows you to specify whether you're using double quotes to contain that field information or a single quote. By default, you can see the list of values that are interpreted as missing. So for example, you have NA or NIL or capital NIL. Anytime it sees these values in a field, it will interpret this as a missing value. If you have special requirements for missing values, you can add them here as well. You can also control how the header is interpreted. The smart header selection will take a look at the first row of your file and try to automatically detect whether it looks like field names or is actually the first row of data. But you can also specify explicitly whether the first row is the header or the first row is actually data. The expansion of date time fields can also be enabled or disabled. As you can see, this source does actually have a date field, and that date field has been exploded into four new features, in this case, the year, the month, the day of month, and day of week. These features are not in the original source. They've been created from this date time automatically. If we disable the date time expansion, those four new fields will not be created. As mentioned previously, there are options for controlling how the text analysis is performed. In particular, you can disable it globally, or if you want to specify the language in case the auto detection is not working, you can specify the language explicitly as well. You can also control how the tokenization is performed. 
This is sometimes useful if you have a text field that is, for example, city names, where you don't want Los and Angeles to be split up into separate tokens, but prefer the city name to always stay completely together. In that situation, you would use the full terms only, as opposed to the default, which is token to tokenize everything. You can also turn off whether or not stop words are removed. You can also control whether or not the word stemming is performed. And you can also control whether or not text analysis is done with case sensitivity or not. And finally, for any fields that are detected as items, you can specify the separator that is used for those items. The default, of course, is the comma, but again, you can specify a specific separator that you would like to use. In summary, sources allow uploading data to be analyzed with BigML, but their second purpose is to provide an opportunity to correct the field types. The data files that are supported should be tabular format and can also be compressed. And you can upload these files using a variety of methods, direct upload, remote URLs, or even through a cloud integration like Google Drive or Dropbox. Once uploaded, there are several advanced options for controlling how the source is parsed, including the locale and how fields are separated, and etc. And you can also control how the fields are parsed, including how text is processed, how date times are exploded, and how items are separated as well.